Hey everyone, welcome back. Happy New Year. I hope everyone's staying safe and healthy out there. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the 1992 Donra set and its errors. And uh, this is a set that was kind of groundbreaking as far as uh, Don Russ is concerned. I know you may be scratching your head because this set is generally regar regarded as being the heart of the junk wax era, way overproduced, nothing good coming out of this set, not really any good uh, rookie cards either coming out of the set, but it was groundbreaking for a couple reasons. It was the first time that they had used a uh, white cardstock making their cards. And so I think, my opinion, it kind of has this like upper deck premium look to it. Now, hear me out. I mean, it's got, it's on the white card stock. It looks clean. It's got, you know, the blue bars on the top and the bottom. And the back doesn't have that boring, like just list of stats. It still has the stats on there, but it's much more clean looking. It actually has a photo, like a close up photo of the, pick, of the players on the back. So much better looking set. Not as well received as I thought it would be, though. I was buying these up. This is really the last time I, like, mass purchased uh, cards. And I was a big Don Russ fan. After, shortly after this, it kind of tapered off for me. I was worried about school. <laughs> and uh, then the baseball strike happened, and I just kind of swore off baseball cards for a while. That did not last, though. So we're going to jump right into this one here. There's 788 cards in the set, separated into two series. Uh, so they uh, also used, uh, separate them into, into two series where it has the red and the blue box or burgundy box, whatever, burgundy and blue. And they also use foil packs, which are tamper proof, I guess you can say, because that was a time when we were worried about people going through the packs, the wax packs and resealing them. Seems silly by, t by today's standards, but it was definitely a thing. And the foil packs kind of prevented that. Diamond Kings were inserted as inserts, not base cards like they were before. And uh, some people were happy with that, some weren't, whatever. So there's a lot fewer Diamond Kings and they are a little bit more valuable. The most expensive card in the base set Comes in at a dollar. That's a Nolan Ryan and a Barry Bonds, both coming in at a one dollar book value. Uh, no joke. I mean, these, as far as value is concerned, these cards are trash. The whole complete set comes in about ten bucks. The Diamond Kings, since they are much more rare, uh, they are usually coming in at a couple bucks a piece. Cal Ripken Jr. comes in at six dollars as the most expensive. Uh, Diamond King in there. And speaking of inserts, the Don Russ Elite Serial Number to 10,000. This is the second year that they had come out. And those cards are awesome. I love to grab them whenever I can. They're Serial Number to 10,000. You think that'd be easy to get, and they're not. They're, it's like one out of every like 20 cases of cards, not boxes. I'm talking like cases. They're, my numbers may not be exactly right, but they're super hard to find. Trust me. And my son and I like to make videos where we're, where, where we're searching for them. And I actually have a video that I'm going to show you, like a bonus video today, where my son and I are going to be looking for a, one of these cars, ripping in a couple cases there. Spoiler alert, we don't actually find any there. So um, one more uh, kind of cool thing about this set, or a couple things actually. Number 403, Pat Mahomes. Does that name sound familiar? Well, that is actually the father of Patrick Mahomes quarterback for Kansas City Chiefs, just had a concussion. So that's actually his father. He played in for about a decade in the major leagues, and uh, this is his rookie card in this set. I don't think it has any value. I think it probably comes in about 10 cents, but uh, kind of a cool one. Number 555 as Nolan Ryan and um, Goose Gossage on the same card, and uh, it's, a, it's a cool card. It has both players on there. It's where they hit, oh, I wish I had the card in front of me. It's where they hit the same amount of saves, and wins in the same day in the same game on the same team. Uh, so it's actually kind of a cool trivia card if you guys don't have it, check it out. Don't run out and buy it, it's still not worth anything. Comes in at 40 cents for that one. Let's jump right into these errors as we were watching our video here. Uh, I gotta fast forward there because it's just ripping. Um, so number 276 to start us off, Dennis Martinez. Uncorrected error, there he is. So on the back, it talks about he had a perfect game, only the 15th one in history of Major League Baseball. That's a big deal, right? Has the date on there, July 28th, 91. But down on the narrative, it says July 8th. So it just has the wrong date. That was uncorrected. And I just want to mention that all of these errors are uncorrected. Donners didn't 
correct a single one. I'm not quite sure why. Next one is number 453, Jose Uribe, wrong date of birth. Man, we've seen him on this list a few times. Jose Uribe with the wrong date of birth. Number 483, Greg Swindell. He's listed as the Reds, uh, but he's has Indians on the card there. He was traded in November of 91, so they didn't have a picture of him in his new new uniform. whoop de doo It's not really an error, but some people recognize it as that. And there's a couple of those like that, like uh, Jack Armstrong, number 762, and Mike Belecki, 776. So they just have the wrong team on there, but not actually an error. It's just because they were traded after the season. So uh, Jeff Schaefer, number 525, has him as the wrong picture on the front. Man, I always feel bad for these guys getting the wrong picture. Someone else's player uh, has Tino Martinez on the front. The back picture is correct. It actually is Jeff. 586, Ted Power. He signed with the Reds in 90 and not 89. Uh, Braves no-hitter number 616 has Merker misspelt. Has it with a K instead of a CK in his name. All right, we're coming up on my, famous, uh, on my favorite part here. No! All right. That was a sad moment. All right, let's move on here. <laughs> number uh, number 620, David Wells. So is an uncorrected error as well. In 90, he tied as having the most strikeouts on the team when it, the card actually says he led in strikeouts. David Wells is an interesting fella. He actually grew up in a single-parent home with his mom, raising him and some siblings, and she was poor, taking multiple jobs to kind of get these kids through school. David Wells actually... Uh, went into sports. He was told that his dad had died and he never met him. At age 22, he found out he was still alive and he met him and they created a relationship there. So kind of interesting story, very American story. A good guy. Number 640, Doug Piott, moving on here. Uh, he was born in 1965. The car says he was born in 1955. So Don Russ thought he was 10 years older than he was. Poor guy. So this checklists are all considered variations, okay? They're not actually errors. So the complete set checklists and the ones that you pull out of packs are different. They actually have different numbering on them. So again, a variation, not necessarily an error. In the packs, they the number, they're slightly fewer numbered on the checklist cards uh, because at the very end on the last checklist card, number 784, they have room for the BC one through eight. Those are the bonus cars that they put on there, like MVP and other things, stuff like that. So, but some cool errors. I bet you guys uh, probably picked up some of these cards if you were in the junk wax era because they were everywhere and they looked cool, but they kind of disappointed. They kind of fell flat there. But I appreciate you guys tuning in. We got more on the way, and I hope you guys are liking and subscribing and staying safe and healthy out there for the new year. And we'll see you next time. I never thought my life could bring anything but catastrophe.